welcome back to another video guys so i wanted to give this little video that i wanted to do a good 24 hours i as soon as i heard the news yesterday i kind of wanted to come to my garage and film and then i kind of pumped the brakes i was like you know what let me just digest all this real quick and not let my emotions speak for themselves uh so a day later i feel like i digested everything the way i should have um and i have I still think the same thing, so whatever. The new revival, which totally went over my head because um, I was expecting something else, but we'll get into that later on in the video. We have this new mock-up version of this, what used to be a 1969 Electric Glide, modernized, um, which is basically the new Electric Glide or slash Street, street Glide. Um, <clears throat> overall, I'll start with the positives. Um, first of all, I think what they're doing with the icons, a uh, little addition thing now, I think that's something very cool. Um, I like the fact that they're gonna go into their into their past and out of all the amazing bikes that Harley Davidson has brought out throughout the years and the decades, um, there is a lot of cool bikes. Um, and I've said it many times, I wish that Harley Davidson would do, I made a video like that. Harley Davidson should do what Ford does or Harley Davidson should be more like Ford where they will go back in in the past and modernize one of the old vehicles and you know with today's tech modernize it and just that old body with today's tech would be amazing right so they started with this uh the 1969 electric light um let's pump the brakes real quick there let's keep talking about the whole uh thing um the icons collection um i think it's gonna down the line, I think it's going to be very, very cool. Um, I think it's going to bring in a lot of clientele that wish they had that special piece of Harley Davidson history. The fact that they're going to do these runs very limited, uh, the new one's what, 1500 1500 a year and only <laughs> never repeating. It's it's essentially like a CVO. 1500 for the whole, uh, this, is, this is for the whole world, not the U.S., yeah, by the way, the which, is, which is, all right, it's very limited, yes. Um, okay, so good idea. I like what the route they're taking with this. I think the paint job they chose for this bike, amazing. Um, I'm, I'm not a too big fan of the white fairing with the blue and everything. It just looks a little offset to me, um, but it is a beautiful paint job. I think it, it's a classic looking bike. Um, it's definitely a bike that you would think of Elvis Presley riding on down the road. 100%, that's like an Elvis Presley bike right there. Mm. Um, and it's cool, man, they're, they're bringing nostalgia back. Now, here, here's my biggest thing. This is where I feel like they fucked up at. Um, I, I don't think they thought too well who their clientele is right now and what I think, what people really want from Harley Davidson right now is like, all right, well, if, let, let's, bring, let's bring back this old bike real quick. What's the first thing that pops up to my head? Me, as a rider right now, I think something from the 80s, I'm thinking an FXR. Yeah. FXRP, boom, mm -hmm. would have been amazing, right? I can see why they're, they're, they're going this route and it's like, all right, well, it's 1500 worldwide and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure absolutely they're going to sell them because there's a bunch of rich people around the world who want an old classic looking Harley Davidson so like nobody this. Nobody will ride them. Just, <clears throat> and no, one, no one's really going to ride them. And 1500 is like, all right, well, 1500 around the world, that's, I think it's an easy sell. Now, with that being said, $30,000 for this bike, way overpriced. Yeah, it's limited. I guess the money and the value is in the limited part. Yes, very limited. But I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm like on and off. Like, well, thirty thousand, no LEDs, no LED lights. It's a solo bike, so there's no, so they they cheaped out because there's no passenger pegs, there's no rear pillion. They don't have. If you want to bring back nostalgia, put, I mean, the, the, put the heel lot. shifter back on. Even yeah. put the heel shifter back on. What's that? Eighty bucks, hundred bucks. I mean, they kind of cheaped out on a lot of stuff that they could have done better. I mean, it had, does have RDRS, and it does have the you know the, the car Apple CarPlay, and it does have navigation. It's but it's essentially a street, a street glide. glide with like metal. But instead of having plain fenders, it's got like metal on the fenders to be retro. And the bags, and like you said, the bags in the fairing with the white. I'm not. A, eh, I know it was an accessory back in 1969, and that's the way it came. But I would have been happier, like you said, to see FXR. Shit, even a Springer would have been nice. 
like a nice springer. Or I mean, that's gonna probably come out down the road. They're talking about like maybe somebody will do a they'll do a Sportster down the road once they discontinue them. They're gonna do not more than two models a year. This year it's one model only because we're already through most of the way through the year. Yeah. So next year we're gonna expect two. So models. next year you're gonna get two models, fifteen hundred each. That's how CVO started out. Two models, 900 of each with the FXR2 and the FXR3. Then they went up to 1,800 or 2,000 um, on the 2,000 model CVO. So it's starting out just like a CVO, except the CVO, you had $10,000 with the extra stuff put on there, chrome and accessories. And this is not, this is just a paint job with the retro styling and it, instead of being a $22,000 street glide, it's a $30,000 limited edition. Mm -hmm. There's nothing really special, like you don't even get a 117 or a bigger engine or anything to distinguish it besides the number plaque and, and the, the one-off <coughs> paint job. It's just a limited. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that's what values that. Now, let me ask a question. I want to your honest opinion on this. Who do you think Harley-Davidson is targeting with this new plan and this new platform they're throwing out like right you now. said they're going they're going after somebody who's rich somebody who's old who wants nostalgia no 20 you know, and i'm 53 and i'm like eh, but the guys that are in their 60s those are the guys who have disposable income and they'll just buy it because they're like oh i wanted a 1969 but it was a piece of crap and i couldn't drive it anywhere this is at least cool and i could drive it across country or whatever so the guys that are into the retro will buy that but guys like you and the guys we ride with that are in their 30s all driving lowrider S's, they're not buying that. No. no nobody's buying I mean, uh, no, no, nobody was buying deluxes, and, and that's the reason why That's why the it. deluxes went away, you know? yeah. So it, like, it, it's, it's very limited, it's a very special piece, and it's like, all right, like, but only rich people are gonna buy this. Your average person, your average Joe is not gonna go out and buy this bike. No. You know, like, if, you know, if you're a collector, yes, um, and if you have that disposable income, like you said, yes. But like I said, I, I think um, if if they really want to grab, and if they really want to get in tuned with their clientele and with with what's going on out there right now, they need to go with the FXR way. The FXR, like yeah. that's that's what or people or bring back a limited edition Dyna or Dyna. Uh, even Dyna I, I, Dyna I think it's like too, too soon for that. <laughs> too well, soon. I would start off with the I would do FXR. Then I would do Springer because they got rid of Springer, you know, quite a ways back. And then do like, you know, you could do like a Diner or maybe even a V Rod or something like that. Out of a hundred. Uh, I mean, there's, you know, like, that, that's what they you're should do the Cafe. Out of everything? No, I would do like Cafe Racer. You don't want to like, like, like a 40 style inspired bike? Like, I would like love a, a 48 head? Panhead. Yeah, a Knucklehead. 48 Panhead, panhead with a Springer front end, yeah. That's take take the M8, put some uh, you know rocker covers on that look like pans. Put a Springer front end, and give me a 114 or 117 in that. That I would buy. Classic style fender in the back. Yeah, with leather bags that are bolted to the fender. Yeah. That that that. Would be that I would cool. buy. 48 pan is my favorite. You you buy that for thirty thousand dollars? 48 pan, yeah. That that's a 48 pan, but this new version of it, this new icon. It depends if they didn't ruin it. If they got it close, if they got, if, stuff, if, if they got it pretty it's like close. buying like a you know a '67 Corvette, but with a freaking new engine in it. Like but a, yeah, but what do you do it if, if they got it pretty close like that? If they got it pretty close, 48. Yeah, that's my favorite. Yeah, I would buy that. Hmm. Interesting. And then I don't know if they would hit it with a thirty thousand dollar price. Maybe maybe some of the other ones will be lesser because you're not getting the electronics like the navigation. I mean, you got to remember they're, they're throwing you know they're giving you the fairing, but they're also throwing in the navigation and everything. Yeah. So that's money right there, and then they're, you know, but they're, they're charging you more than a special, and you're not getting really anything special. <clears throat> you're getting, a, you know, a limited paint set, which is the front fender and the, you know, the, the, the rear fender and the tank or whatever, because the white's not really, to yeah. me, is kind of... Like I said, it, it's very limited for, to, to throw that little number, 1500, which is a very small number, into the world, like worldwide only, it's very yeah, it's small It's probably going to be like one per dealer, or maybe the big dealers will have two, but then are they going to jack the price because it's limited edition? Yeah, that's yeah, a Yeah, and then it'll be 34000 or 35000 or whatever. Who knows? Um, like I said, um, I, I really like this whole I iconic thing. I like the icon idea. I, I, idea is, is really awesome. But, uh, I, but where, where they kind of messed me up at, because when they started like 
throwing hints at this and they're like, oh, revival, and here's like a little picture of like whatever the name. I'm thinking they're gonna bring back a bike that they had back there. Like, they kind of did like this, modernized, so they kind of did like this, mm -hmm. but as a new model. And for you to be, for the average person to be able to buy it, not just, all right, he's limited. Well, edition when they thing. said, when he did the reveal and he said, we're gonna do exclusive icon series well I'm not, I'm not talking about that I'm, I'm i'm going back back when when they came out all the models in january that's what i'm saying he, yeah he hinted at this in january yokin okay, okay he was okay. talking about he said we're going to go exclusive better than cvo so when they said better than cvo i said oh it's going to be fifty thousand dollars they're going to want or whatever so at least they didn't do that it's in between a special and a cvo you know, special is 28,000, 27,000. 26, 27. Yeah, 26, 27. 42 for, you know, or 41 for a CBO. So they're in the middle, like they're. Yeah. I mean, hey, you know, if, if, if you are if you like this bike and you're able to afford it, and if you're able to keep, you, you know, get your hands on it, awesome. Like I said, I, I think it's a cool looking bike. I, I really, I think it's really nice looking. That's a bike you don't change nothing on. That, it's, it's, I mean, we have a friend who's got a CVO and you don't change shit on those bikes. He changed everything except yeah. the paint job. So that's a pretty bike. That's a bike you leave alone. Yeah. Maybe you put pipes I mean, on it. I would put fishtails on I mean, it. It's, it's a collector's bike. Yeah. It's uh, any, anything that's a collector, you don't change. No. You leave as is because yeah. you you start losing value. But I mean, I, I think it's cool. But it's cool, but not thirty thousand dollars cool. Not thirty thousand. Harley, what's with the LEDs? Come on. So, so, <clears throat> hold on, hold on. I mean, just before, yeah. Whoops. Oh, really? LEDs? You can't put LEDs on a thirty thousand. <laughs> let, let, let's let me ask you a question, and I want all of you guys to answer down below in the comments. If this bike was released as a new model, walk here, you could go buy it, and it came in blue, and then we'll do a red one, whatever. And it's not limited, it's like, all right, we're just gonna build them out. How many people do you think actually would've bought that bike? Probably less than the 1500 they're gonna buy the other ones. Exactly. But the fact that they're gonna make it limited is like, oh my God, I gotta have it, I gotta have it, it's limited, it's gonna be, it's probably gonna be worth X amount of money later on. But if that bike would have not been limited and it would just been a, a regular model, at that price point, it would not. It would have just oh, sat. Yeah. It would have sat in sad. every dealership till 2029. It would have just sat there. It's true. The limited point is is the selling point. That's yeah, it. It's exclusive. It's limited. It's a street glide, dude. Yeah. It's it's literally just a street glide. Yeah. What a it's, retro paint job. That's it. There's yeah. nothing really special about that bike. I mean, the seat Honestly. looks a little funky, but I don't know how comfortable it could be. If it looks like it's on springs or whatever, it could be a little weird. Who knows? I mean, let me check it out. Yeah, I mean, maybe uh, like nobody's gonna let you ride them because they're nah, limited edition. We won't be able to ride it, but maybe if one of our local dealerships get it near us and we're able to see it in person and show you guys and make a video, do a little walk around it. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, drop your thoughts down below. Let me know what you guys think about the bike. Let me know what you guys think about the whole icons edition thing. Let me also know. Drop your comments down below about the question too. Do you think if this bike was just a regular model for this year, do you think it would have sold? Honestly speaking, drop it down below. Um, I think that's gonna pretty much be it. I think we covered everything. Thank you so much for watching. I also, if you didn't know, I got my FXR. Talk about, talk about FXR and FXRT and blah, blah, blah. So what we have here. Pretty sure you guys saw my comment, well, my post. The one I picked up over the weekend. And um, yeah, I... Uh, yeah, which which bike do you think this is gonna be going on? Forget about that it's black already, because I mean, and he's just, I want it to be pretty cleaned up and everything, so it might be repainted anyways. But, take a wild guess. What bike would this be going on? Jerry, I know you hate this fairing. <laughs> I know you hate it so much. How do, you, how do you feel about this now? Because I've been speaking about this for so long that I wanted to get this fairing for one of my bikes. Oh, yeah, it's cool that you got it. It's not my cup of tea. I think you're cool, but you're not my cup of tea either. Uh, I know. <laughs> Guys. I would rather have that, that pairing. <laughs> I'm going to catch you in the next one. Like always, let the force be with you. Ride safe. I'm going to slip. <laughs> Enjoy the ride, baby. Peace. Peace. You rather have what? That pairing. The Memphis Shades? Yep. Over this? Yes. Really? Yep. Memphis Shades, did you hear that? Jerry chose your fairing over the FXRT fairing. <laughs>